The tricuspid valve is often referred to as the forgotten valve. Everybody always focuses on the mitral valve and forgets the tricuspid valve, which in a way is true. But on the other hand, if you go to the different seminars and lectures, you will find the title of the forgotten valve so frequently that now I have the impression that the mitral valve is the forgotten valve. Nevertheless, it is an important valve. Both valves are important. Now let's focus on the tricuspid valve. William Harvey was actually one of the first who recognized the importance of the membranous tricuspid valve. He compared it to a sluice gate and recognized that there are similarities between the hydrodynamics of pumps, for example, that were produced at the time in London, and anatomy, the tricuspid valve. So what do we need to know about the anatomy of the tricuspid valve? Well, we have a septal leaflet, an anterior leaflet, and a posterior leaflet. The septal leaflet is in close proximity to the interventricular septum, to the membranous part, and the posterior leaflet is usually the smallest leaflet. It often has a lot of scallops. The tricuspid valve is larger than the mitral valve. We have an area somewhere in the range of 3.2 to 6.4 square centimeters. The shape of the tricuspid valve on the annulus is more triangular. And similar to the mitral valve, we also have papillary muscles, or rather papillary muscle groups, the so-called anteroseptal group, the anterior posterior, and the posteroseptal papillary muscles. The location of the tricuspid valve is more apical and anterior. It is thinner and therefore more fragile. This diagram shows you the different cut planes we can use to visualize the tricuspid valve. The four-chamber view, the right ventricular two-chamber view, and the inflow-outflow view. In general, compared to the mitral valve, it is much more difficult to really distinguish the separate leaflets from each other with echo. A few rules of thumb. If you perform a four-chamber view, you will see the anterior leaflet and the septal leaflet. Unless you tilt the transducer down more towards the coronary sinus view, then you won't see the septal but the posterior leaflet. If you perform an apical two-chamber view or a parasternal long-axis view of the right ventricle, you will definitely see the anterior leaflet. Which other leaflets you see depends very much on how you angulate the transducer. However, in most instances, you will see the posterior leaflet. And here's a patient demo which shows you how you can name the different leaflets of the tricuspid valve. So I will show you how to image the tricuspid valve. There are several views where you can get a good image quality. The first view is the parasternal long axis view of the right ventricle. So this is not the view that I'm showing you right now, but it's a view where you tilt the transducer downwards from this view, and then all of a sudden you will get the tricuspid valve. So this is the right ventricle here. This is the right atrium. And this is the tricuspid valve. This would be the anterior leaflet, and this is the septal leaflet. And from this view, it is often uh, possible to even quantify the maximal TR velocity, especially if you have eccentric TR jets. The second view, which is also good to use, is the parasternal short axis view. Again, we're somewhere in the region of the aortic valve, so at the base of the heart. Here we have the tricuspid valve, and in this view, it is often very nice to see the subvalvular apparatus. You see here? This would be the subvalvular apparatus of the tricuspid valve. And the third view is the four-chamber view, the apical four-chamber view. It is advisable to move the transducer out further lateral and to tilt the septum. You can usually get a much better delineation of the tricuspid valve that way. Try to also bring the transducer as far as you can in the middle of the sector. And then you have the anterior leaf, uh, the septal leaflet here. And this would be either the posterior or the anterior leaflet. You cannot tell simply uh, because it depends on how much you tilt the transducer. If I go further down, it would be more the posterior. If I go further up, it would be the anterior leaflet. So by these three views, it is possible to assess the morphology of the tricuspid valve. Okay, so it's time to practice. 
Here is a peristernal long axis view of the right ventricle. Here is the tricuspid valve. And my question, which leaflets do we see? Here we have the anterior wall of the right ventricle. Therefore, this leaflet here must be the anterior leaflet. This part of the right ventricle is the septum because we have the left ventricle also in our field of view. Therefore, this is most likely the septal leaflet. However, we also see the coronary sinus, and the coronary sinus is usually very close to the posterior leaflet, so theoretically it could also be the posterior leaflet. So we have the anterior leaflet here, and the posterior leaflet here. Next view, parasternal short axis view. We have the tricuspid valve here. Which leaflet is this, and which leaflet is this? Well, this is close to the interventricular septum because this extends down to the left ventricle from the aortic root. So this could be the septal leaflet. But since we also tilted further or fairly far anterior, this could also be the anterior leaflet. And this here is most likely or almost always the posterior leaflet. So we have the septal or the anterior leaflet here and the posterior leaflet here. The four chamber view, again the tricuspid valve visible here. Which leaflet is this and which leaflet is this? This is attached to the septum, therefore it must be the septal leaflet. And here is the anterior leaflet, unless you tilt the transducer far down until you see the coronary sinus, then you would have the posterior leaflet here. So, septal leaflet and anterior leaflet. And finally, an RV inflow outflow view. This is the right ventricle here, the right atrium. We have blood flowing into the right ventricle and out to the pulmonic valve. This is the pulmonic valve here. This leaflet here is most likely the anterior leaflet, while this leaflet here is the posterior leaflet. Now away from morphology, let me turn to physiology and to the normal RV inflow, the normal flow across the tricuspid valve. The signal looks very similar than that of patients with sinus rhythm. Again we have an E and an A wave, as long as the patients are in sinus rhythm of course. The flow however is less. The flow velocities are less because the tricuspid valve is larger. In addition, in contrast to the flow across the mitral valve, the velocity varies much stronger with respiration. Here's such an example. This is a completely normal pattern across the tricuspid valve where we have an increase of flow during inspiration. Let me now show you the tricuspid inflow in an actual patient. I will now show you how to get a good signal across the tricuspid valve. You can get that best from a four chamber view, but again, I would suggest that you put the transducer as far lateral as possible to get a good angle at the tricuspid valve and a good quality. It's very important that you can actually see the tricuspid valve because that usually gives you a better signal. And then you would place the, tri the sample volume of the pulsed wave Doppler right at the tips of the leaflet. and optimize the settings. First of all, don't put the, the filter too high because you have low velocities. You need to reduce the filter setting and you also have to optimize your velocity region because the velocity across the tricuspid valve is usually lower. So what you get is you get an E wave and an A wave, very similar to the mi mitral valve. I will now show you also what happens with, respi with respiration, so I'll change the time settings. A 
okay? What you can see is that we have fluctuations in the velocity of the E wave, and this would be an inspiratory inflow of the tricuspid valve, which is higher as the preceding beat. Now that we discussed the basics of the tricuspid valve, the anatomy, how to identify the various leaflets, and how the flow across the tricuspid valve looks, we will now turn to the pathologies, specifically tricuspid stenosis, tricuspid regurgitation, and congenital abnormalities of the valve. These topics will be discussed in the next chapter. So I hope this information is of value to you when you image patients. Keep in mind that if we perform standard views, four-chamber view or whatever, the tricuspid valve is usually not seen as good as the mitral valve. So you need to focus to the valve and use special views, the views I showed you. Now we'll turn to the different pathologies we can expect of the tricuspid valve.